the devil, the world and the flesh. Because lies and deceits are the stock and trade of those who direct the world revolutionary movement, WRM, at the top, never, since history began to be recorded, has a grant been made by governments, educational institutions, so-called charitable foundations or other sources of wealth and power to enable historians to compile an accurate, documented history of the world revolutionary movement, WRM, unable to finance the help necessary to do a thoroughly satisfactory job, which would require at least 10 more years of study and research necessary to prove to the hilt the knowledge I have acquired trying to find the answer to the question, why is it that the human race cannot live in peace, and thus enjoy the blessings and bounties God has provided for our use and pleasure in such abundance? I offer what evidence I have been able to obtain to prove that what we term WRM is nothing more or less than the continuing Luciferian revolt against the right of God to exercise supreme authority over the entire universe. Many historians, including such outstanding students as Mrs. Nasta Webster, Count de Ponson, Cop and Alban Selly, Cop on P.O. Cop and C.J. Dom Paul Benoit, Ed. M. Eckert, Arthur Proust, Domenico Margoidola, Wichlow, His Eminence the Most Reverend Cardinal Carol Rodriguez, Don Bell, of Palm Beach, Florida, and many others seem to have been unable to connect the wars, revolutions and general chaos prevailing in this world today, with the fact that the Holy Scriptures, the inspired Word of God, tell us clearly and plainly that when God decided to inhabit this earth of ours with human beings, Satan arrived in the Garden of Eden to cause our first parents to defect from God. He accomplished his purpose, despite the fact that God had walked with them and talked with them in the early paradise we call Eden, explaining to them his plan for the rule of the entire universe and telling them how he wished them to live for a period of time on this earth to prove they honestly loved him and earnestly desired to serve him voluntarily for all eternity out of respect for his infinite perfections. Study of the history of comparative religions proves that even the most primitive nomads and Sephardic tribes not only believe that other worlds existed before the Supreme Being created this world, but proves positively that what some of us call the uncivilized tribes, who existed by hunting, fishing, and gathering wild fruits of the earth, before human beings began to cultivate the soil and breed animals so they could be used for productive purposes, believe that at some time, in some place, before God decided to create this earth, there had been a revolution originated because one of the creatures God created challenged his right to exercise supreme authority over the entire universe. Because this aspect of the origin of the WRM would fill many bulky volumes, it is sufficient for our purpose to state that this basic principle of religious belief was shared by the Aborigines. W. Schmidt author of Der Ursprung der Gottseids, has had seven volumes published. Munster, I.W., 1912-1914, 1940. Volume 8 was in the press at the time this book was being written, i.e., 1958, and volumes IX to XIII are still in manuscript form. He is considered to be the greatest authority on this subject and Father Schmidt distinguishes the primitive people of this world as the Urkulturen, e.g., those who live by gathering food, and hunting fowl, fish, and game from the Primarkulturen, who developed from the former into producers by becoming tillers of the soil and breeders of animals. The people we call aboriginals today are the remnants of human society which never developed beyond the Urkulturen stage. Father Schmidt does not intend that the word Urkulturen means the civilizations with which he deals are identical with the original civilization of the human race. 
he uses it to mean the most ancient type of civilization our means of investigation and research can reach. Father Schmidt divides what remains of the Urkulturen, i.e., primitive civilizations, into three groups. 1. The Southern, comprising several tribes, aboriginals in southeastern Australia. 2. The Central, comprising the Pygmies and Pygmoids in Africa and southeastern Asia, including Ceylon, the Andaman Islands and the Philippines. And 3. The Northern, or Arctic Americans whose representatives are also found in northern Asia and disseminated among the Eskimo and American Indians. All of these so-called uncivilized human beings share the fundamental belief that, 1. Before this world was created other worlds existed, 2. At some time, before the Supreme Being created this world, a revolution had occurred in the celestial world, universe caused by the fact that some of the Creator's creatures had challenged his right to exercise supreme authority over the entire universe. 3. That, as a result of this revolt against the absolute supremacy of the Creator, God, the universe was divided into good and evil parts. 4. That the evil spirits tried to interfere with God's work while he was actually engaged in creating this world. 5. That ever since this world was finished these evil forces have been at work trying to prevent human beings from doing the will of God. 6. That it was the representative of the leader of the heavenly revolt who brought death, sickness and all other evils to the human race because he deceived our first parents into defecting from God. 1. 1. The author is indebted to Mr. Richard M. Paz Sill, Poughkeepsie. N.Y., who sent him a copy of the book Satan, published by Sheet and Ward. Readers wishing to go more deeply into this aspect of the WRM would do well to read this book. Page 8 Satan, Prince of this World Each group of descendants of the Urkulturen, who have survived without contact, until very recently, with so-called civilization, has its own particular belief regarding how the leader of the evil spirits, whom we term the devil, tried to interfere with God while in the act of creating this earth. Each group has had its own particular way of informing its children how and why the devil brought death, sickness, wars, and other tribulations to the human race. But all agree that the devil was, and still is, the adversary of God, the supreme being who created the heavens and the earth. According to the Algonquins of the north central part of California, the devil comes on the scene when the supreme being has almost finished the work of creation. He tries to appropriate something of the work for himself. According to Algonquin mythology the devil often appears in human form and because he brought death to this world God turned him into an animal which they named a coyote. In News Behind the News I published evidence which strongly indicates that Satan cursed our first parents to defect from God, causing Eve to indulge in perversions of sex, on the promise that if she accepted his advances and followed his advice, he would teach her the secrets of procreation thus making her and Adam the equal of God in power. I pointed out that the Luciferian creed teaches that Satan initiated her into the pleasures of sexual intercourse. We use the word perversions in the sense that what the devil taught Eve in regard to sex and sexual behavior were practices contrary to sexual relationship as God intended should exist between a man and his wife. While reading the book Satan, we found that other people, accepted as authorities, quoted evidence and opinions which support the belief that perversions of sex did enter into bringing about the fall of man and subjecting him to death. Certain ministers and priests wrote me to say that the assumption that Satan had physical intercourse with Eve is utter nonsense because Satan is a pure spirit and therefore incapable of indulging in sexual intercourse with a human being. As to these arguments I agree with the old woman who said, 
everyone to his own liking as she kissed the cow. In the book Satan, while discussing the adversary of God in primitive religions, Joseph Henninger, S. V. D. says that the Wyndham tribe of California refer to God, the Creator, as Olelbus and to the devil as said it. According to the mythology of the Wyndham tribe, Olelbus desired that the members of the human race should live together as brothers and sisters, that there should be no birth and no death, that life should be agreeable and easy, and the purpose of life should be to rejoining Olelbus in heaven and live with him for all eternity. To satisfy the hunger of the human body, Olelbus created a species of nut which has no shell and falls off the tree when it is ripe. This species of nut or fruit is still a staple item of the Wintum's diet. Olelbus ordered two brothers to build a paved road from earth to heaven to facilitate the tribe's reunion with their creator. But Sedit appeared on the scene and persuaded one of the brothers that it would be better to engage in sexual intercourse and procreate the human species. The one persuaded by Sedit argued the other into agreement, so both defected from Olalbus and joined together to destroy the road they were building to heaven. Sedit, horrified when he finds he has brought death to the human race and must die himself, tries to escape his fate. He makes himself a mechanism of bowels and leaves, a plane, by means of which he hopes to fly to heaven. But he crashes and is killed. Olalbus looks down from the heights of heaven and says, See. The first death. From henceforth, all men shall die according to the mythology of the Yakuts who live in the northeastern extremity of Siberia. In the beginning the earth was entirely covered with water. Ai to John, the supreme being, saw a bubble from which issued a voice. A. To John asked the voice, Who are you? Where do you come from? The voice replied, I am the devil. I live on the earth that is under the waters. Ai to John says, If that is true, bring me a bit of it. The devil dived and brought up some earth. Ai to John took it, blessed it and then laid down on it, and rested on the waters. The devil tried to drown him. But the more he pulled and tugged to overturn the raft God had made of earth, the larger it grew, until to his amazement and discomfort, it covered most of the waters and became this world on which the human race lives today. The mythology of the darters of the Altai is very similar to that of the Yakuts, except that their legend says that after Erlik, the wicked one, had brought up the first earth from the depths and the creator fashions it into dry land, the creator orders him to dive a second time and bring up more earth. Erlik determined to do what the creator did, and brought up two lots of earth, one of which he concealed in his mouth but it swelled in size until he had to spit it out in order to prevent his choking. The earth he spat out God formed into the mountains and marshes and the wastelands. Then the Creator told Erlik, You are now in a state of sin. You wanted to do me an ill turn. All men who also harbor evil thoughts shall be your people, but the good man shall be my people. We hope to prove our point that the division between Good and evil started before this world began and was transferred here by the devil we Christians call Satan. When Lucifer, working through one of his princes of darkness, whom we have named Satan, caused our first parents, Adam and Eve, to defect from God, they and their progeny automatically belong to Lucifer and remain children of the flesh until they, of their own will and accord, prove they desire to re-establish their, page 9 Satan, prince of this world friendship with God by being born again spiritually. The manner in which the Luciferian conspiracy, which challenged God's right to exercise supreme authority over the entire universe, was transferred to this earth in order that the king of hell might add it, and its human beings, to his domain, will be dealt with in detail further on. 
At this point it is necessary to produce evidence to explain what really did happen in that part of the celestial world we call heaven at the time of the Luciferian revolution. This is necessary because the forces of evil, which have directed the continuing Luciferian conspiracy since it was transferred to this earth, have caused the truth to be hidden, and made the truth so difficult to obtain, that the average man in the street can't be blamed for knowing little, if anything, about the truth, even though his eternal salvation may depend on knowing these truths. The greatest stumbling block the average person has to overcome before he, or she, can understand and believe in the continuing existence of the Luciferian conspiracy is to erase from his mind the false conception of devils because he has been taught to believe that devils are hideous creatures, with ugly faces, horned heads, cloven hooves, and forked tails, etc. St. John of the Cross says, The devil is the strongest and the wiliest of our enemies, and the most difficult to unmask. St. John says, The devil is skillful enough to turn the world and the flesh to his own account, the possession of the souls of men as his top most faithful acolytes. This saying says that the devil caused the ruin of a great multitude of religions which set out on the life of perfection. Two, the reason most human beings mentally picture the devil as a hideous, deformed, abominable creature is because artists have caricatured him as such in order to bring us their conception of all that is evil and horrible. In doing this they did the human race, probably at the instigation of the devil himself, a great disservice. Theologians of the early Christian church, and those of the Catholic and Protestant churches in more modern times, agree that the devil is a very different type of creature from what most people believe. This misconception of what the devil really is, must have resulted from the devil's own cunning and guile and from his ability to make human beings do his will. According to the Holy Scriptures, the creature who challenged the right of God the Creator to exercise supreme authority over the entire universe was Lucifer. Lucifer was so named because he was and still is the brightest and most intelligent of all God's creatures. His name is, Prince of the Dawn, Holder of the Light, he is a pure spirit. As such he is ageless and indestructible. He has abilities and capabilities beyond the understanding of the human brain. He uses these for selfish and evil purposes. The holy scriptures tell us that because of pride, i.e., his inflated ego and false belief in his own perfections, he led the revolt against the supremacy of God and because of his power and great influence, he caused one-third of the brightest and most intelligent of the heavenly host to join him in rebellion. If telling the truth shames and confounds the devil, Lucifer, it is my own opinion, as confirmed by Saint John of the Cross, that, due to the devil's wiles, none of the numerous Christian denominations teach their congregations sufficient of the truth regarding devils and fallen angels, of which there are in existence multitudes who wander through the universe, including this planet, seeking the ruin of souls. Humanity has been brainwashed into accepting mental restrictions in this matter until today, even the vast majority of those who profess to be Christians believe only in some sort of mythical supernatural evil spirit whom we call Satan, and the personal good spirit we call our guardian angels. Millions outside the Christian religion used to believe there is a celestial world, and devils, and angels. Many modernists claim that belief in the supernatural is a sure symptom of insanity. But if we are to understand the WRM we must know, and believe that even the very lowest choir of angels consists of multitudes of pure spirits, each possessing more perfections than the next in that substantial way. To complete this first hierarchy we must mount through the numerous multitudes of the archangels, and then go on to the even greater multitudes of the principalities. There is still the second hierarchy consisting of the powers, virtues, 
and dominations, and the third hierarchy consisting of the thrones, the cherubim, and the seraphim, of this whole galaxy of heavenly beings created by God, Lucifer is the greatest. He stood at the very peak of God's created perfection. There are many things God has not as yet permitted the human mind to understand. We are on this earth on trial. We have been given an intellect and free will to decide for ourselves whether we wish to love and voluntarily serve God for all eternity or literally go to the devil. If we knew all that has happened since Lucifer led the revolt against the supremacy of God there would be no test. By faith, the teachings, the scriptures, the prophets, and Christ, we must believe and accept truth which are beyond the comprehension of our human two on page two of pawns in the game we stated that most, if not all religions started out on a more or less uniformly high level, in which the worship and love of God, formed the basic principle. I have been severely taken to task because of this statement, but from what Saint John of the Cross has to say, it would seem that I am in good company. Page 10 Satan, Prince of this world minds to understand. We must exercise humility instead of pride. Those who remain humble, and believe, will see God. Those who become proud, and inflate their egos, until they lose all sense of their own littleness and limitations will go to the devil. It would be impossible for the average human being to even begin to surmise why Lucifer fell from grace, and why he defected from God and influenced so many of the heavenly host to join him in rebellion if it were not for the fact that the scriptures teach us that God, when he created both angels and human beings, gave them the sovereign will to do as they pleased. It would seem logical to suppose that if God had not given his creatures an absolutely free will he wouldn't have obtained much satisfaction from his creation. God's pleasure, it would seem, is derived from the love of his creatures who remain loyal, faithful, and true, voluntarily, out of respect for his infinite perfections. Thus we see the truth in the old saying, the greater the pride, the greater the fall. Lucifer's pride caused him to fall from his pinnacle of greatness. He was second only to the actual Godhead. His defection caused him to become ruler of that part of the universe we term hell. The fall of Lucifer proves that all angels and all human beings can become evil if they so choose. The foregoing is intended to enable the average person to understand, and believe, that since the heavenly revolution was ended by Saint Michael, the Archangel, the universe has been dominated by two supernatural powers. God rules over those of his creatures that remain loyal to him, while Lucifer is king of the regions of darkness, and rules the multitudes who voluntarily defect from God and join him in rebellion. The next big stumbling block which prevents the average person accepting the truth that the Luciferian conspiracy was transferred to earth in the Garden of Eden and has continued here ever since, is the fact that the scriptures don't explain clearly on what grounds Lucifer challenged the right of God to exercise supreme authority over the entire universe. None of the great theologians has ventured to declare a definite opinion on this matter. Knowing only too well the truth of the old adage, a fool will rush in where angels fear to tread, I still feel it my duty to express my own opinion on this all-important matter, arrived at after many years of concentrated thought and study. If God bases this plan for the rule of the universe on the premise that lesser beings can be taught to know him, love him, and to wish to serve him voluntarily for all eternity out of love and respect for his own infinite perfections, then it seems reasonable to suppose that Lucifer challenged God's right to exercise supreme authority over all the universe on the grounds that his plan was weak and impractical. If this is so, then obviously Lucifer's ideology must be based on the premise that might is right, and rule must be totalitarian. 
considering that one third of the highest and brightest of the heaven host joined him voluntarily in rebellion against God, it seems also reasonable to suppose that Lucifer founded the further totalitarian principle that beings of vastly superior intelligence have the right to rule those less gifted. In other words, God's plan is to derive pleasure and glory from the love and service voluntarily given him by his creatures who remain loyal despite the lies, deceits, and temptations to which they are subjected by Lucifer's satanic agencies, while they are undergoing their period of trial. The Luciferian ideology is that all lesser beings must be forced to obey supreme authority by application of absolute despotism. Therefore, we would seem entitled to believe that we now are faced with the same alternatives on earth. Those who favor totalitarianism are determined to enslave those who favor freedom and voluntary service. When I investigated the hidden, as well as the public life of Albert Pike, I learned the following facts which throw a great deal of light on my belief that we are experiencing on this earth similar conditions which accompany the Luciferian revolution in heaven. I find plenty of passages in the holy scriptures to support my contention that the Luciferian conspiracy will end here on this earth, exactly as Saint Michael ended it in heaven. If this comes true, those souls who remain loyal and faithful to God will join him in heaven, and those who defect from God will join Lucifer in hell. According to the Luciferian doctrine as expounded by Weishaupt and Pike, Lucifer, the greatest and most intelligent of the heavenly host, challenged God's right to exercise authority over the entire universe on the grounds that only a totalitarian dictatorship could ensure permanent peace and prosperity by forcing all lesser beings to obey the edicts of the supreme being by use of absolute satanic despotism. Further, the Luciferian doctrine teaches adepts in the highest degrees of Grand Orient lodges and the councils of Pike's new and reformed polity and right, that God had two sons. They refer to God the Creator, as Adonai, or Adonai. They identify his sons as Satan and Saint Michael the Archangel. They claim that Satan accepted the Luciferian ideology because he considered it more practical than his father's plan for the rule of the universe. The Luciferian theologians claim that Satan is the elder brother of Saint Michael. They admit that Saint Michael, whom they term the upstart, and le parvenu, did cause Lucifer to be cast out of heaven. But the Luciferian doctrine also claims that by this very act Lucifer was elevated to become God of that part of the universe we commonly designate as hell, and that he is therefore the equal of Adonai. Students must never forget that words are only a means used to explain certain sets of circumstances or to designate some person, or, page 11 Satan, prince of this world place, or thing. Thus it is that hundreds of tribes, races, and nationalities use hundreds of different names to designate exactly the same god, the same devil, person, place, or thing. For this reason we will discuss what some words in general use really mean when considered in their relationship to WRM universe. Means the totality of existing things, including the earth, the heavenly bodies, and all else throughout space. Thus we see that the universe includes heaven and hell, as well as this earth. Heaven. The abode of God. The supernatural beings we call angels and the spirits of the righteous who enter heaven after death terminates their period of trial here on earth, and or on other, planets. Three, in studying the WRM we must never forget that this earth is in itself an infinitesimal part of the galaxy of planets and stars we call the solar system. It is still more important that we remember that the solar system is an infinitesimal part of the universe. On a clear night we can see with our naked eye thousands of galaxies of solar systems far larger and greater than our own. Each has its sun, 
each its planets and stars. Each sun exercises perfect control over its subordinate bodies. When we realize that far beyond reach of our eyes there are millions of other solar systems, many of which scientists declare are bigger than anything we can see, then it becomes possible to begin to realize the greatness of the creator of all these worlds, regardless of whether they be Earth similar to ours, or what we term celestial worlds. The point we must understand and remember is that the word heaven means that part of the universe in which supernatural beings we call angels, and the spirits of these who have proved they wish to love, honor, obey, and serve God voluntarily, reside for all eternity. Heaven is a place of bliss, the pleasures and joys of which are beyond the capacity of the human mind to comprehend. Christ told us, my father's house, heaven, is a place of many mansions, worlds. He told us also that he went from our humble abode, earth, to prepare a home for us. The scriptures devote a great deal of space to events connected with the heavens. It is sufficient for our purpose therefore to say that the scriptures and Jesus Christ are our authority for saying here that there are seven heavens the dimensions of which are also beyond the comprehension of the human mind. That should be a comforting thought to people who think, even if they don't say, of their early associates, if I thought Jimmy Jones was going to heaven, I'd quit trying to get there. These people need not worry. God's creation, and his plan for the rule of the heavens is perfect. You won't be crowded. You won't have to associate with those who are incompatible. Conditions will be happy, peaceful, joyous, and all sufficient for our heavenly natures. Hell is that part of the universe in which Lucifer and the angels who defected from God at the time of the heavenly revolution reside, together with those who defected from God during their period of trial served on this earth and possibly in other parts of the universe. For the holy scriptures tell us that Lucifer is a pure spirit. Thus he is indestructible. He must live on for all eternity. The scriptures also tell us that there is a judgment immediately after death, and the final judgment. 3. It is a matter of interest to note that when Pope John 22 was a young priest, he wrote articles in which he stated his firm belief that he did not believe that the souls of all human beings saw God during the immediate judgment which takes place after it is released by death. These writings proved to be a bone of contention amongst the church's theologians and after the writer was made Pope he called together a special council of those he considered to be the most learned elders of the church. They ruled against him, and he accepted their ruling because he had never made his personal beliefs the subject of a papal bull, or to declare such a belief was to be the dogma and part of the teaching of the church over which he presided. This throws a great deal of light on the general public's idea of papal infallibility. The Pope is considered infallible only when, after consultation with all his advisors, long periods of contemplation and prayer, asking for the spiritual guidance of the Holy Ghost, he makes a definite ruling on a question of faith or morals. Such a pronouncement then becomes canon law and must be accepted by all those who wish to remain members of the Roman Catholic Church. Such a pronouncement in recent years was belief in the fact that Mary, the mother of Jesus Christ, was taken into heaven body and soul, and now occupies the seat of the highest of the angels who defected from God at the time of the heavenly revolution. But a Catholic can still hold his own opinion regarding his soul seeing God immediately after death, or when it attains the necessary spiritual perfection to deserve the beatific vision. For the frantic efforts being made at this period of the world's history to conquer space is primarily to find out if forms of life similar to our own exist on other planets. 
the satanically inspired men who direct this probing into the hidden parts of God's universe are attempting to do and to find out things which God didn't intend us to do or find out until revealed to us by Him. One would have to draw heavily on one's imagination to interpret the present research into atomic energy for destructive purposes, as being the work of those who believe in God as opposed to Lucifer. It appears pretty obvious that those who direct and finance atomic research out of public funds seek knowledge of outer space which they don't intend to share with the general public unless it will serve their own totalitarian plans to do so. But it is comforting to know that even the devil will hang himself if given enough rope. It would appear to me that those who do the devil's work on this earth are coming very close to the end of their tethers, i.e., the ropes with which they will hang themselves. Page 12 Satan Prince of this world according to Revelations it is after the final judgment that all the creatures God has made will be separated into two camps. Those referred to as the sheep will go to heaven, while the goats will go to hell where Lucifer will reign for all eternity. The scriptures inform us that hell will be a place where the totalitarian rule of Lucifer will be one of utter chaos and confusion. We are told that everyone will hate everyone else, because all in hell will realize that they were deceived by Lucifer and his agents into defecting from God. The flames of hell, which burn but do not consume, consist of the knowledge that those who are damned have lost the love and benefits, the joys and companionship of God for all eternity. Limbo and Purgatory Many who profess the Christian religion don't believe that there are any in-between places where souls may serve a further period of trial or purification after termination of the period of trial on this earth in order to prove that they deserve the beatific vision. They are perfectly entitled to their own opinions on this matter. My personal opinion is that the scriptures indicate that there are other worlds on which spirits undergo further periods of trial to decide their ultimate and final fate. The fact that absolute knowledge regarding this matter has not been revealed to human beings is a blessing. If we all knew that there were intermediary stopping off places before we arrive in heaven or hell as our final destination, we might not try hard enough to earn our eternal reward while on this earth. It would seem logical to suppose that those who serve God as nearly perfectly as is humanly possible, will go to heaven when they die. It is just as logical to suppose that those who serve Lucifer to the best of their ability while on earth will join him in hell when they die. The vast majority of people don't seem to be able to realize that upon this earth there are considerably more people who serve the Luciferian cause than there are trying to put God's plan for the rule of the universe into effect upon this earth. Lucifer this greatest of all the angels, created by God, challenged his creator's right to exercise supreme authority over the universe and all on and in it yet he is mentioned only once in the Holy Scriptures. Isaiah 14 12, King James Version. There are two other places where it seems reasonable to suppose the words used refer to Lucifer. Those are Luke 10 18 and Reverend 9 1 11. The Holy Scriptures lack of revelation regarding why Lucifer challenged the supremacy of God and the fact that in the Holy Scriptures Lucifer is identified with Satan, makes most people believe that Lucifer and Satan are one and the same supernatural being. Study of the secret writings of men, who have at various periods of history directed the WRM, definitely prove that those who direct the WRM at the top are Luciferians. Letters of instruction dealing with Luciferian doctrine and dogma have from time to time fallen into the hands other than intended while being circulated for instructional purposes, between those who direct at the top and their immediate subordinates. In my humble opinion, 
the revelations concerning the Luciferian doctrine and conspiracy are just as much acts of God as are the revelations and inspirations which make the Holy Scriptures the inspired and revealed Word of God. I believe that because God, Adonai, is just and merciful, He intended that all His creatures on this earth, whom He put here to work out their own eternal fate, should know every detail regarding both sides involved in obtaining possession of our souls for all eternity. Five. Study of the WRM indicates that it is very important to decide whether or not Lucifer and Satan are one and the same supernatural being. Search of the Holy Scriptures will not reveal a definite ruling. The most famous theologians who have lived since Christ have shied clear of making a definite pronouncement on this particular question. But men who have directed the WRM at the top are very definite in their belief that Lucifer is God, the equal of our God, whom the Luciferians refer to as Adonai. They claim that Lucifer is the holder of the light, the God of goodness, who struggles for humanity against Adonai, the god of darkness and evil and all wickedness. Albert Pike, who worked out the military blueprint of wars and revolutions which he calculated would bring the Luciferian conspiracy into its final stage upon this earth, stated definitely in his letters to fellow conspirators, that Satan, although prince of this world, is definitely inferior and subordinate to Lucifer.6, 5. While we recognize the truth that the devil, Lucifer, is the father of lies, as told to us by Jesus Christ, and the synagogue of Satan, SOS, who direct the Luciferian conspiracy here on this earth, are sons of the devil, and masters in the art of deception, I still maintain, However, that a great deal of truth can be learned from the secret writings of men who were the high priests of the Luciferian religion in their day, because they never intended that their pronouncements on this all-important subject should fall into hands other than intended. As will be proved in other chapters, many men have directed the ceremonial and dogmatic executives of the synagogue of Satan and the Luciferian religion since Weishaupt died in 1830. They include Moses Hofbrook and Albert Pike of the United States of America, Mazzini and Lemmy of Italy, and, most recently, Alistair Crowley of England. Six Pike in his direction of the Luciferian conspiracy are dealt with fully in other chapters. Page 13 Satan, Prince of this World Satan. The scriptures use the word Satan quite often and tell us about his evil purpose and works. He is, as the word implies, the adversary of God. Satan is invariably associated with Lucifer. Most Christians accept the fact that Lucifer and Satan are one and the same supernatural being commonly referred to as the devil. Those who have directed the Luciferian conspiracy upon this earth have been very definite in pronouncing the doctrine that Lucifer is God, and Satan is, Prince of the World. There is scriptural support for the belief that there are five or more other worlds over which Lucifer placed, princes, and several others, in addition to claiming that Satan is the eldest son of God, Adonai, and the older brother of Jesus Christ also claimed that Jesus Christ is one and the same person as Saint Michael the Archangel. They claim that when God decided to inhabit this earth Lucifer made Satan, prince of this world. This claim is confirmed partially by the scriptures, which refer to Satan as prince of this world. John 14 30, 16 11, f. 2 2. The Luciferian doctrine teaches that Satan, using human agents, developed the Luciferian conspiracy so well that God, Adonai, decided to send Saint Michael to earth in the form of Jesus Christ, to halt the conspiracy as he done in heaven. Those who worship Satan as, Prince of the world, and Lucifer as God of the celestial world, claim that Christ failed in his earthly mission. 
they claim that when Christ refused to accept the overtures of Satan, his betrayal and death were arranged in such a manner that the Romans acted as judge and executioners for the SOS, while the high priests used mob psychology to make the Jews reject Christ as the Messiah and then to assume the guilt for his crucifixion. Study of history indicates very strongly that those who have directed the Luciferian conspiracy upon this earth have made it their special business to make as many Jews as possible defect from God, reject Jesus Christ, and have used them to serve the purposes of the high priests of the synagogue of Satan, which Christ himself informed us is composed of them who say they are Jews, but are not and do lie. The synagogue of Satan have hated the Jews from their beginning because God wished them to carry his banner here on earth. The SOS warped the Jews' knowledge of God's wishes while they were in captivity in Babylon. They have since warped the Gentiles' knowledge of Christ's wishes in this regard also. It is because the synagogue of Satan hated the Jews and had treated them so badly in trying to obtain control of their minds while they enslaved their bodies in captivity, that Christ told us his mission here on this earth was to release both Gentiles and Jews from the bondage of Satan and his satanic agencies. In my opinion the agent you of the Illuminati who put out the synagogue of Satara's propaganda and lies have deliberately hidden from general knowledge many things which would prove that it was the members of the synagogue of Satan who caused the prophecies regarding Christ's betrayal and death to come to pass. Judas and the Jews were only instruments they used to accomplish their diabolical purpose and then cover their own guilt by placing it on the shoulders of the Jews who, unfortunately, because of lies and deceits, have been made to wear that cloak of guilt ever since. It must be admitted that the betrayal of Jesus by Judas was real and disastrous, particularly as it affected Christ's efforts to convert the Jews and release them from the bonds with which they have been bound by the synagogue of Satan. But why is it that so many ordained ministers of Christ's religion preach that God intended that the Jews should bring about the death of his Son, our Lord and Savior? Why do they make the members of their congregation believe that Christ surrendered himself meekly to his fate in order that the prophecies of Scripture might be fulfilled? My study of this phase of history gives me an entirely different view of what really happened. The Holy Scriptures tell me that Christ knew what was to happen. He went about his father's business by day because he knew that because of his popularity with the masses the authorities would not dare arrest him during the daylight or in public. The Scriptures say that Christ hid himself at night. This proves that, despite his prophetic knowledge of what was to come, he in no way acted to bring about fulfillment of the prophecies. The absolute contrary to general belief appears to be the truth. Christ exposed Judas' treacherous intentions, obviously in the hope that such denunciation would defer him from committing such an abominable crime which would lead him to suicide and eternal damnation. Christ condemned Judas precisely because his betrayal was to prove disastrous. His career was cut short at the very beginning of his mission. It is interesting to speculate on what might have happened regarding history since then if Christ had been allowed to live another 50 years. It is a strange thing that those who serve the synagogue of Satan seem to live almost invariably into their 80s. Here we have the most outstanding example of those who direct the Luciferian conspiracy in making human beings serve their diabolical purpose. God knew what would happen but he didn't want it to happen. Christ knew what would happen, but he didn't want it to happen. He even prayed to his heavenly Father in the Garden of Gethsemane, and begged to be saved from his pending fate, but at the same time Christ did as many of us have done since. He said, Not my will, but I will be done. I believe it was the synagogue of Satan who plotted, financed, and directed the betrayal, trial, and crucifixion of Jesus Christ.
and use Judas as their tool, and cause the Jewish mob to assume the guilt for their, page 14 Satan, prince of this world sin against God, and crime against humanity, in order that they could retain the hold which Christ himself told us he had come to earth to break. What the synagogue of Satan, those who, as Christ told us, are them who say they are Jews, but are not, and do lie, did was to make it possible for them to use the Jews as tools, agents, and whipping boys from then to the present day. Tell the truth to the Jews as well as to the Gentiles, and perhaps the course of history may have changed sooner instead of later. What happened to Christ nearly 2,000 years ago has been celebrated as a Luciferian and Satanic victory in every Black and or Adonaiside Mass ever since. The horrible, revolting ritual claims that the synagogue of Satan defeated Christ's mission to earth by bringing it to an early and sudden end, when they were able to engineer his betrayal, conviction on false charges, and death. I can find no mention of this as a Jewish victory in the documents I have studied which deal with this aspect of the Luciferian conspiracy. Those who direct the Luciferian conspiracy at the top have also encouraged and even financed anti-Semitism, and used it to serve their secret plans and diabolical ambitions. But they have also deceived Gentiles into serving their diabolical purposes in exactly the same way. It is utterly ludicrous to say that WRM is a Jewish plot designed to give the Jews ultimate control of the world, because study of the Luciferian plot proves clearly that all forms of government and religion are to be destroyed in the final stage of the Luciferian conspiracy, so that when no power or cunning can prevent us, we, the high priests of the Luciferian religion shall crown our leader King Despot of the entire world according to the writings of those who have directed the Luciferian conspiracy. Their purpose is to enslave all lesser human beings absolutely, physically, mentally, and spiritually, and force them to accept the Luciferian ideology by application of satanic despotism. This being a fact, those who claim that the WRM is a Jewish, Roman Catholic, Communist, Nazi, Masonic, or any other kind of conspiracy, talk utter nonsense, because evidence in this book will prove how the conspirators intend to destroy all forms of government and religion. As far as our investigations have gone, the evidence indicates that those who have directed the Luciferian conspiracy secretly, have always masqueraded as champions of another established religion. We have the Luciferian who headed the Jewish Sanhedrin during Christ's mission on earth. We have Weishaupt, who taught canon law by which the Christian missionary efforts were governed in his day. We have Albert Pike who was head of the Masonic religion, for Masonry is a religion, in his day, etc., etc. God the Supreme Being, Creator of the Heavens and the Earth, Universe. God is known as Jehovah, but this form of address dates only since 1518. The name given to God by the human race in pre-Mosaic times was Jehovah, sometimes spelled Yahweh, meaning Creator. God the Creator is also known as Elohim. But it is interesting to note that after Moses had been given the commandments by God, the fact that they forbade any person to take the name of God in vain caused the religious leaders of the Jews to substitute the word Adonai or Adonai. This is the word used by the high priests of the Luciferian creed when making any pronouncement or defining any dogma. P-R-O-T-O-C-O-L-S the word means original written draft of a plan designed to achieve a definite objective. The protocols of the Luciferian conspiracy were written as soon as human beings had mastered the art of putting their thought and intentions regarding the future, on parchment, or other suitable material, so they could be preserved for the information of those who came after them. 
the Luciferian conspiracy to prevent the human race from putting God's plan for the rule of the universe into effect upon this earth so that a totalitarian Luciferian dictatorship may be imposed on all lesser beings in the final stages has constantly been revised and modernized, but never changed. It has been revised and modernized so that those directing the conspiracy can take full advantage of rapidly changing social, economic, political, and religious conditions, and also to take full advantage of the advances being made in applied science. Men who refuse to give God credit for their superior intelligence invariably become Satanists, and as such, serve the secret plans and further the diabolical ambitions of those who direct the Luciferian conspiracy. This truth is made abundantly clear in the writings of both Adam Weishaupt and Albert Pike. They say that when the Luciferian conspiracy is finally imposed on what remains of the human race, the king despot will be served by a few millionaires, economists, and scientists who have been proven to be devoted to the Luciferian cause Assisted by sufficient soldiers and police, the United Nations International Police, to enforce the will of the dictator upon the masses, Goyim, all the Goyim, without exception, are to be reduced to the state of human cattle by a process of integration on an international scale. After the human race has been turned into a vast conglomeration of humanity, Breeding will be limited to types and numbers considered sufficient to fill the requirements of this state. Page 15 Satan, Prince of this world, God. Artificial insemination will be used to accomplish this purpose. Less than percent of the males, and 30 percent of the females, will be selected and used for breeding purposes. The purpose of this book is to expose the conspiracy and design to accomplish these diabolical purposes. We explain how the conspiracy has been developed, until today it is in its semi-final stage. We then tell what will happen if the truth regarding the existence of the continuing conspiracy against God and the human race isn't made known far and wide, as quickly as possible. The scriptures promise that if we make the truth known to all the people of all the remaining nations, the knowledge of truth will set us free from the bonds of Satan with which we are being more and more securely bound as the years roll by. Satan is still prince of this world. Our task is to shorten the time when the prophecies related in Revelations are brought to pass. It is our duty to bind Satan by making his evil plans known, so that he may be cast back into hell for a thousand years, as foretold in the twentieth chapter of Revelations, and so hasten the day when Satan again breaks his bonds and brings chaos, tribulations and further abominations to the people of this earth. It is then that God will intervene for the sake of the elect. These things will not come to pass until people who consider themselves the elect prove they are sincere. In order to prove our sincerity we must, in my humble opinion, become doers of his holy will, and not hearers only, of his word. I feel that mass action can shorten the days of our tribulation. If we parents have any true paternal affections, we must think of the welfare of the future generations also. Revelation tells us that when Satan escapes from hell he will introduce abominations the like of which the world has never known, and will never know again. Of this period Mark 1320 says that if it were not for the intervention of God on behalf of his elect, there should no flesh be saved. St. Matthew confirms what Mark says in chapter 24, verses 3 to 32. Like many others who have tried to find out who causes wars and revolutions, and why, I groped around in the red fog of Luciferian propaganda for many years. I gathered together thousands of pieces of evidence. I traced down hundreds of clues all over the world. At one time and another I blamed selfish capitalism, communism, Nazism, and political Zionism. 
Others I consulted were equally convinced that one or another of these evil forces were the secret power that worked behind the scenes of governments, and made them adopt policies which ultimately forced them into wars and revolutions. Some blamed the Roman Catholic Church, others Freemasonry, still others Judaism, the World Federalists, Bilderbergers. But when I used the Holy Bible, the inspired Word of God, to test the truth or fallacy of each piece of evidence, I began to realize the truth. That truth is that the Luciferian revolt against the right of God to exercise supreme authority over the entire universe was transferred to this earth in the Garden of Eden. It has continued to develop here ever since until it is now in its semi-final stage. Those who have directed the conspiracy have used every guile and form of cunning to set sections of the human race against each other, by dividing them into opposing camps then arming them, and making them fight over one issue or another. When I considered how those who were enemies in one war were allied in the next, how capitalists financed alleged workers' revolutions, how those who call themselves Jews, but are not, and do lie, sacrificed just as many of the lesser Jewish brethren as was necessary to serve their own diabolical purposes. How devilish propaganda divided millions of Christians into opposing armies, and made them fight and kill each other off by the tens of millions, without anyone engaged having the slightest personal animosity towards the other. Then I became convinced that the Holy Scriptures are the inspired Word of God, and that Jesus Christ carne on earth to warn us of the existence of the Luciferian conspiracy. He lived, suffered, and died in order to make known the truths which will release us from the bonds of Satan so we can enjoy eternal happiness with his and our Heavenly Father. It is up to us now. We can accept or reject the truth. John 8.32, page 16 Satan, Prince of this World